Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce Gus Corey. He's going to be participating uh, in our presentation here. Uh, you have a PowerPoint, you have a copy of this in your supplemental packet, and uh, this is going to uh, help us um, help us. The PowerPoint is, is going to kind of help us go through this discussion. Um, and so I'm just going to dive into this on the PowerPoint. You've got to push the button for me, Gus. Okay. Uh, the question before you this evening, uh, we reviewed this, by the way, with the Finance and Policy Executive Committee on November 14th, who had a series of questions and elected not to take action at that time. We're coming back with those answers and asking you to consider this this evening. Uh, should the TAMBOR pursue state legislation to provide an exemption to the 2% cap on the local transaction use tax to allow TAM to consider the pursuit of a new sales tax measure dedicated for transportation purposes? Um, this would, uh, the, the, the bill that we're recommending it is, ex is an exemption of up to 0.5% for TAM uh, affording flexibility for us to place an item before the voters if we so choose to uh, supplement our existing transportation sales tax measure A. Um, the existing state sales tax dropped actually by a quarter percent due to Prop 55 at 7.25 percent as effective uh, January. The cap of 2 percent would allow uh, the county or any local jurisdiction to raise the local sales tax to 9.25 percent. Um, the existing local jurisdictions uh, sales tax, and you can see it on this chart. This is all in your original board packet, by the way, and with a lot of detail in the memo and the attachments. Um, as you can see, effective January, um, uh, go to the chart. Yeah, go back. Thank you. Uh, two of our jurisdictions, San Rafael and Fairfax, will be at 9.0% uh, in terms of sales tax, uh, with the most recent uh, passage of uh, increase uh, uh, town uh, services in Fairfax. Um, yeah, go ahead. At this point in time, with the failure of the strong starts measure, there is a quarter percent capacity within this 2% allowance. But my feedback that I've gotten from your city managers has been uh, that several of them uh, are, are suggesting that some of the local jurisdictions may want to have that capacity for things that you might want to do in the future. Uh, so one of the, I, I want to, us to keep that in mind as we talk about this additional 0.5. We, we have a lot to discuss here. Uh, should we renew and expand by how much? Uh, what's the duration? Uh, we have our sales tax, original sales tax, expiring in 24, 25. It seems like a long way off, but uh, uh, as we watch this type of sales tax, uh, two-thirds activity happen around the state, it doesn't always, it's not always successful in the first try for a renewal or an expansion. We have a general election in 2018, 2020, presidential, 2022. Uh, we're very reliant on this current sales tax for operations of transit and local roads and things like safe routes. Uh, uh, sh can we do, uh, should, should we do more? What, what else should we do? Uh, between January and June, uh, my team and I want to do a, a, a series of discussions in terms of uh, uh, getting everyone educated and reminded of what the sales tax funds now. What would a quarter cent add? What are we learning from our strategic vision plan surveys? What is the public expecting? Do we want to do some polling? Do we want to do additional surveys? Um, we know there's a, a, a series of outstanding needs. Uh, we know that we had some indication back in 2014 with a poll that the public may consider an additional tax to meet those needs. Uh, so we got a lot to do before we actually would, would come to a conclusion of putting something on the ballot. We're hoping that we can do a lot of educating between January and June. We're hoping in that June, July, August time frame 
you will consider the development of an expenditure plan advisory committee. This then creates a public forum for putting a pie together. So we take the education that you've received and we start extending it to the public it, within that EPAC uh, model. Uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, towards the end of 2017 into early 2018, we'll be out to every town and city council. Here's what we come up with as options. Uh, what do you think? And hopefully we reach a conclusion on an expenditure plan to be on the ballot in 18. Does it go on the ballot in June? Does it go on the ballot in November? These are all kinds of things we got we to gotta talk about, the, the benefits. The first thing, though, in considering this is to open the gate for us to consider a quarter cent or, uh, or more uh, while preserving the option for the local jurisdictions to be able to pursue your own sales tax. So the recommendation that we're, we have before you this evening is the sponsoring of legislation to open that gate up to 0.5%. Um, uh, go, go to the next one. Uh, what you have in your packet is a, a, a pretty good list, uh, and, and we will continue to do some research on this, of what the governor has approved uh, in terms of these pathways for transportation sales tax increases. Uh, we had a question from the executive committee, what about a general increase? Uh, we've seen that happen once with the city of El Cerrito. We point that out in our staff analysis. Uh, we had that tried in Sonoma uh, with the county and the governor vetoed it. Uh, staff are not recommending that at this time. You're free to, to, to you know, consider that more. But we believe there's a very good pathway for uh, the governor to allow this exemption for transportation purposes. He, and the governor's not approved these as general tax increases. We talked with Senator McGuire and his staff on this. Um, he's very interested in supporting this. He wants to make sure he understands where you all stand as individual jurisdictions. Uh, and again, uh, this is the opening of the gate. Uh, this is not a guarantee per se that we're going to be on the ballot, but six, eight months from now, you will be looking at the next step, which is is the you know taking uh, taking a, um, a more serious at look at this with uh, an expenditure plan committee. So that's uh, that's the presentation. Gus and I are working closely on this uh, with uh, Dave Chan and, and Lee Zhong, and uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Yes, Alex, <coughs> please. Um, so, so I do have a question. Um, if another agency, if if we pass, if we approve going for this legislation to raise the cap 0.5% and then decide um, that at this go around we will use up 0.5% and another agency wants to go out with a measure, will they then have to seek another piece of legislation to raise the cap? Go back to the chart. Yeah. Not necessarily. Um, now, if strong starts had passed, the answer for a couple jurisdictions would be yes. San Rafael is, would be at the, at the at the top of the existing allowance. But uh, we would preserve the quarter cent in San Rafael and Fairfax. And interestingly, if you uh, look at the, uh, the jurisdictions that are at, at uh, 8.25 in many jurisdictions, at 8.75, many jurisdictions at 8.25, there is room for your jurisdiction to work within the existing allowance without having to get legislation. Yeah, I think the purpose of the legislation is essentially to give you maximum flexibility. And that's why we're seeking an exemption to the existing cap so that, as Diane mentioned, we preserve the existing capacity for each city to have its own determination of what they want to use that capacity for. And just to underscore a point, you're not compelled to go out for a sales tax measure for transportation, but it's merely giving you the opportunity to do so when you deem that to be fit. Uh, furthermore, we're saying up to half a percent because it's in your discretion how much you want to decide to go out for. If you want to continue measure A, or as Diane was mentioning earlier, if you want to supplement measure A, so then that way you go to a half percent uh, as a result, 
but you guys can't even really have the conversation if we're not affording you the capacity to do so. So I think that that is the sole intention of the legislation is to merely allow you to continue the conversation to dig deeper and decide should you extend measure A? Should you supplement measure A? How much and how long is totally your discretion and that, that's the process that Diane laid out earlier. It's, it's so, so the second part that I, I am not quite clear on is we're talking about uh, raising this for the purpose of passing a transportation set tax but if another jurisdiction wants to use part of the unused capacity it does not have to be a transportation sales tax for that agency or jurisdiction. Well uh, uh, within the existing two percent yes another jur you can go forward with anything within right. the existing two percent our 0.5 would be preserved for transportation for transportation only thank right. you yeah. yes commissioner arnold and what's the timing of the of introducing this bill when, when is it introduced when is it work through the legislator legislature so we have until the end of february to in order to get it. something in but there's a whole the, the sooner that we can reach council. a con yeah, yeah exactly okay. reach a conclusion and you know, assuming that the board would even approve this we right. still have to get Senator McGuire to officially right. or Assemblymember Levine to agree to actually author the legislation and they're gonna they're pa they're popular members and so their package is gonna fill up so the sooner the better it makes it easier to actually get something done and then it would it would be assuming it's successful and makes its way through it would come to the, the governor in July right. so, okay. yeah and that 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 depends too on right, I, uh, I mean we now have a super majority in both houses yeah. I mean this has typically been a partisan issue but ideally if we said hey let, let's we want a two-thirds so that you guys have it in June that'll be possible if okay, we just want great. a majority vote then that'll be it's the first year of session next mm -hmm. year so the governor would have until the middle of uh, September mm -hmm. uh, to actually take action on on bills uh, next year. Okay, thank you. Yep. Please. And so this is all towards um, setting up for giving us the ability to go out for something in 2018. It, it's totally your discretion. No, I know that, yes. but that would be the early. That, yes, that's, that is correct. That's towards so meeting ideally, the timeline. So the, the first opportunity would be yes. June 18th. That's correct. So the governor would sign it into law. And so if it's just a majority vote bill, it would take effect Jan 1 of 2018, which would give you ample time to place something on, ideally the November ballot. Okay. And then has, has there been discussion with the city managers or what, what sort of conversation has happened out in the city? Well, we, we are actually meeting with the city managers on December 12th and um, uh, talking in a little more detail about this. We've had some discussion about the process we intend to follow. We also uh, understand that the chair may be uh, appointing a steering committee on this of board members. We have a timeline we're working on as to how this all fits together. We would like to present that back to the board starting in January. Um, we, uh, we, we're open to what the cities and towns uh, may need regarding this in terms of coming out and discussing. Um, what we see in other counties is the representative transportation boards uh, agreeing to the cap measure um, uh, without individual approval from the cities and towns, but we are open to your recommendation regarding that. Uh, I think their biggest concern that we've heard in the past few months is to not use all the capacity right. on this right. and to leave them the opportunity to do what they need to do, whether it's libraries, uh, Mayor uh, Phillips had mentioned last month, or safety services or whatever. And so this gives that, make, preserves that option. And that's why we, we like this. And, I, and I, they've indicated support for it, but we have a little more detailed discussion to have. And some of that will happen in the next two weeks. And just one more point. There's, let's assume it's not just the cities. If the county, if you as supervisors decided that you wanted to carry a measure then we're basically holding the cities hostage in, in some jurisdictions from having a measure of their own. And that's why I think having this be an exemption to the cap still provides you with that flexibility to make those decisions. Okay. So then question, if, the, if it was determined during our, during our um, investigating what we want to do and development of an expenditure plan 
that we would just go for a renewal of the measure A, which is a half a percent. Would and but yet we had gone out and created this right. uh, exemption. Right. Could we would we then be using if we in, if we went out for just a renewal would it be using the exemption or would it yeah. be falling back? So I'm just wondering if it would free up that so. half well, a percent underneath. Okay. So so the way that uh, we're recommending that we write the legislation is to provide you up to half a percent. Got so it. if you in in during your deliberations you decide hey we just want to re up on Measure A, then you do the half percent. It would not count against the existing capacity. That you currently have, you wouldn't trigger it. I, well, what I've seen in no, other no, no, counties, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to see is if it does it doesn't free up some of no. that existing <laughs> capacity. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, because it's we're writing it for a specific purpose. Yeah. I got you. Yes. For transportation. Yes. Correct. Right. Correct. Correct. Now, one one thing I do want to mention: what we've seen in a couple other counties is the duration that the governor is willing to sign these uh, extensions or exemptions for you know two years or four years mm -hmm. so there could come a point where it expires and if we would want to revisit this like let's say come back in 2020 2022 we may mm -hmm. need to go out for additional legislation we may be under a new governor so we got to think about the right. duration issue because several counties yeah. have had these expire uh, and they've had to go back and renew but, so. but but to that just piggybacking on that for a moment the, the and I, I did a similar bill for Monterey and San Mateo County uh, because they really wanted to go out and have a measure. And what's compelling to the governor is that we do want to create capacity for a specific purpose and that the community is behind it. He doesn't want to get in the way of local control. And so I think to the extent that there is agreement and that you guys have maximum decision-making ability, then the governor is going to look favorably upon that. Commissioner Lucas, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I, I, I like the way that it's crafted, but to kind of piggyback off one of these earlier questions, if, if this exemption is for transportation, it's an unlikely scenario that would have happened, but can it be crafted in a way so that maybe an individual city doesn't think, hey, this is great, I can then go out as a city and pass a sales tax measure on our own that would use this exemption before? It, can it be crafted in a way that only it would apply to us. Yes, and that's what we're, we're basically giving the Transportation Authority of Marin, which in my estimation seemed appropriate just because of the representation on the board, uh, for, for you to go out and actually put the measure on the ballot. So the exemption, the legislation, the exemption for applies town. for TAM yes. specifically. Perfect. Yes, yes, great um, question. And then the only thing, which is a quick correction, uh, Novato's mm -hmm. sales tax is actually a quarter cent uh, less on the chart there. Oops. It, it was what it was, and then we, we swapped out measure C with measure F, so we should be, at, according to that chart, eight and Yeah. No you know problem. what, and our apologies, it's actually, that's what's posted on the Board of Equalization's uh, <laughs> website, too, so we got to correct them on that. Really? All right. <laughs> Hurry up. There you go. Well, we probably show 8.75% now because the state hasn't dropped to seven and a quarter. Right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually, that's a really good point. That's yeah, correct. Okay. And, and just are 8.75, right? Right. And just so we're <coughs> clear, the, the two percent is a separate silo from the, the state. Correct. So yeah. we're still bound by the two percent, no matter what the state rate is. Great. Great. Commissioner McInerney. Um I wanted to follow up on your comment that um, the, the governor looks at whether the communities are behind it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it seems like, as you've described it, the process makes sort of makes sense, but. Um, is it common that you would go and seek legislation like this, go through the whole process, get the governor involved when we actually haven't decided whether or not we're going to actually do this? Mm -hmm. And yes, and I guess and that's and and as part of that process, is it clear and is it, is there anything in writing that's mm -hmm. suggesting that we've already made that determination or somebody could use it to say that, you know, we've already decided to go for a tax on this before we've actually gone through the public outreach process and the polling and all that? You know, I, 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 we, we've talked quite a bit about this, actually, and we've talked to other counties about what they've chosen to do in this regard. And, uh, you know, we, uh, the difficulty we face is if we do decide to go to the ballot in 2018 <coughs> and this is not in place, then unless we get urgency legislation, which is going to be, we, we think could be difficult going into an gubernatorial year like we'll be going into, 
that then when we, when we uh, post the measure through the registrar on the ballot, it's going to be conditional on getting this raised. And that's a death knell, uh, in our opinion, in, in terms of a message to the public is that we'd, we'd like to raise the sales tax, but it depends on this other legislation over here. So what we've been advised and what we see every county do is to get this in place and it frees you then to proceed through the process of deciding whether you want to go to the ballot or not. In, in, in many cases, and, and we can point these out if, if, if need, we need to, the, the, the counties get, got the allowance in place and then for whatever reason they decided not to go to the ballot. And so in some cases it expired, they had to do renewal, in some cases they, they didn't do it at all. You know, San Mateo, which Gus, Gus just mentioned, he got the allowance for, they've decided we're not doing this right now. Okay. So it, it, it really, it clears the way for us to have a, a uh, clean process to considering of putting this on for a vote and not making that vote conditional okay, right. on. And it makes, I, I understand the tactical reasons yeah. for doing it. I'm just wondering, does the governor expect that there's a little more oh, than this tentative so, decision well, that uh, by a board to maybe go and explore it? I mean, or does he, so is he fine with that? Uh, so it was the, a dichotomy of two extremes. I had Monterey <laughs> that was absolutely chomping at the bit because I was carrying legislation through Assemblymember Mullen in San Mateo to do a statewide cap increase. Mm -hmm. Because it was something that the Assembly, Lo Assembly Local Government Committee said that we should do, because they got tired of doing these bills piecemeal. So I checked with the governor's office, and mm -hmm. they said, yeah, we don't really have a problem with it. And then the governor said, right before it was going to get to his desk, <laughs> actually, it was too late for me to pull it back, he said, hold on a second. My priority is going to be Proposition 55. And there's going to be a lot of clutter on the 2016 ballot, as you, you folks witnessed. There were 16 statewide initiatives. And so um, he decided to veto the bill. I had to do a bill during the last five days of session, which is absolutely insane, get it through both houses. And I had Monterey that was absolutely chomping at the bit to have the legislation passed. I had spoken to San Mateo, and I kind of convinced them because of their funding situation there. They weren't sure. They're now looking at going out in 2018. And I told the governor's office that, look, they should have the option to decide. They're considering it. They have to do their own polling and the like. And the governor was receptive. He said, look, if, if they're going to consider doing it and they're going to have a serious conversation about it, then it's totally acceptable for me to, to sign the legislation. And there was precedent. He did it for Alameda County, Contra Costa County. Um, th they've had multiple bills, actually, those, those counties in general. Um, so... Yes, I mean, that, that, that's the long-winded answer to your question, but I think there's also a chance during the process to have affirmation. Tam would be the sponsor of the legislation that would show up in the committee analysis. Um, I would be representing you and talking to members of the legislature, the committee consultants, and other coalitions, uh, League of Cities, CSAC, and others to help support uh, our efforts. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Commissioner Phillips. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I generally think that this is a good idea because it does uh, offer some flexibility with regard to uh, the provision, uh, still subject to, uh, you know, local vote, if you will, <clears throat> and so therefore, it's not like it's a unilateral decision, but rather a community decision. Uh, so I think it's, uh, I think it is a good idea. Uh, I also, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to me I'm getting more and more comments as we go along from the community with regard to congestion and traffic issues and condition of the roads, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that the other source of the revenue is, is dropping down. <coughs> so therefore, I think that the community, it's hard to predict uh, in these days, but it's, I think the community would generally be in favor of uh, having at least this option uh, to improve the, the tra uh, transportation situation. I do think that we're going to have to be very specific, or somewhat specific at least, with regard to how those funds might be used because there is more and more skepticism with regard to giving, quote, government more and more money. But I think we can certainly demonstrate that. So I do think it's a good, a good idea. Thanks for bringing it to us. Yes, sir. Our pleasure. Yes. Um, I think that the, uh, the state left a huge hole in the budget for transportation. And 
we're going to have to fix it. I, uh, and so I am supportive of this. <coughs> I think it is very important that all the 11 cities in the county also sign on to this because I know that will make a big impression when it starts going through the committees. Commissioner Kinsley. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just, you know, when I read the staff report, I thought that the staff was being redundant when they had this thing about that the plan would have to be reviewed at the local level in an expenditure plan, and they put it on page 120, and they put the same thing right again on page 121. But after hearing Tom speak, you know, it sounds like we can't say it enough. <laughs> uh, I think that, that maybe that is a good point uh, that we should be making, that this is really setting the, the opportunity, not um, the commitment. Um, I strongly support uh, going forward at this point, but uh, subject to the comment uh, that Commissioner Arnold just made, I personally believe that each of us who represents our cities, towns, and county um, have a responsibility to get our councils to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and to get their support. And frankly, I think it, that I would like the measure, the, the motion that we make this evening to commit to going forward but also to send a letter and be prepared to meet with the councils in each of the jurisdictions so that we can explain it several months before we're going to be coming back to them, inviting them to participate in an expenditure plan, but make sure that they agree with us and they understand it so that we are not put in an awkward position at some point in the future with them thinking that we've cut out their opportunity for additional taxation. So. Um, you know, whenever the motion might be made, I would just ask that that uh, reach out to the individual communities of, and the county be included within that, seeking some letter of support um, for it. Not, not in advance of approaching uh, Senator McGuire by any means, but certainly ideally we would have it by February or, or March. Thank you. Yes. Uh, James. And then Go ahead. I th thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm new. I'm just sort of learning here, and I'm just curious. What is the cost of, of, of something like this getting a to TAM of getting this tax increase? Well, uh, we're under contract with Gus as our advocate, and he's a tremendous bargain, if, if I can say that. So it's just part of his contracted that. work. So this is part of our normal way thank of you. business. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Conley. Yes, uh, thank you. And I apologize uh, for being late tonight. I was actually at a uh, meeting of the California State Association of Counties uh, down in Southern California. This topic did come up as part of a broader discussion of uh, the significant transportation needs that all of our communities are facing. And just to, I think, reiterate a couple points that have been emphasized. Um, <laughs> The, the consensus um, amongst that group is that in order to put something before the governor, you should plan on being specific, and transportation seems to be the, the issue that he recognizes uh, is a way to go forward on this. Um, the backdrop, obviously, is that we have a situation where the state has indicated it can't actually get a transportation package together uh, at this point. Um, at the federal level, we may have an infrastructure package. That remains to be seen. Uh, but in the meantime, we have these increasing local issues, as has been articulated by our colleagues here. Um, so I think the time's right to go to the local communities, um, uh, tee it up in terms of looking at legislation, at least to give the option, and then um, I think make the case with our localities to, uh, to really explore this issue. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to open to public <coughs> comment. Is there any public comment? Welcome, David. <coughs> Good evening, David Schoenbrunn. I'd like to offer some context to the vision of sugar plums dancing in each of your heads. A transportation sales tax ballot measure is the only way county residents get to give meaningful feedback to an agency. If TAM continues along the policy direction it has had since inception, I will lead a campaign to defeat a sales tax increase. 
I wrote the ballot arguments and opinion pieces that opposed the VTA and CCTA sales tax increases on the November ballot. CCTA's measure failed. With that work already done, it will be very easy to oppose. Let's be clear. TAM is stuck in the same rut that VTA, CCTA, and all alphabet agencies are stuck in. None of these agencies is thinking about the future. They're all short term. A city manager wants a road, blah, blah, blah. These agencies look at transportation through a Caltrans-like lens. That perspective is now obsolete, having been superseded by consideration of induced demand and climate change. We're in an entirely different world, and the priorities that will be coming forward to a tax expenditure plan advisory committee are going to be the priorities of the past. I personally participated in Contra Costa's uh, uh, expenditure plan advisory committee. We were actually appointed by the county. Uh, but it's not just the inability to think creatively about the future that would make me want to oppose a sales tax measure. I give this agency's performance a failing grade. TAM stood by mutely while Caltrans ignored its responsibility to monitor traffic operations. As an insider, I know the cause of the intolerable traffic on the road, roadways these days. It was by no means inevitable. It is the result of bureaucratic incompetence, indifference to the public's time, and an unwillingness to buck the power. If board members are surprised with this strong language, it's because you're in a bubble you're obviously not talking to people that commute. It's shocking to me that TAM can be so self-satisfied while its transportation network is deeply dysfunctional. But the public is not going to forget if you bring them a sales tax increase. And I will do my part to make sure they remember. Thank you. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Christmas. All right, seeing none, we'll bring this back for discussion and a motion. Is there any further discussion on this matter? I would entertain a motion. Well, Madam Chair, I, I'd like to speak to the public speaker's comments. Um, what, it do, what his comments reflect, in my opinion, is the importance of reaching out to the broadest part of our community. That's the way we developed Measure A, as we we reached out, we developed um, with the public a, an expenditure plan. Then if for those who were around and for those who weren't, I would just point out that we then went and created sub-regional groups in the south, the central, the north, and the west to allow them to look at it. And we made adjustments right up until the final uh, decision was made for an expenditure plan. That's the way that this will be a reflection of the community. And without it, it wouldn't pass, but with it, uh, even one strong voice wouldn't stop it. Thank you. I'd like to make the motion that we authorize proceeding um, with uh, pursuit of legislation uh, for um, increasing the cap on the sales tax measure specifically for transportation purposes uh, for TAM and to confirm that uh, Marin cities and county will be uh, asked to uh, consider sending letters of support uh, of that uh, uh, legislation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I just have a, a clarification on the motion. So as far as bringing it back to the cities to send a letter of support, um, is there a time frame? I'm, I'm looking at our executive director. Well, that, I, oh, my gosh. Uh, as far as when we should make sure we get that on our agendas to bring it before our council to consider sending that. Well, well, with your action this evening, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, we will reach out tomorrow to see how we can get on your agendas if that is the appropriate pathway for your particular jurisdiction. Um, uh, Senator McGuire will, I think, very much appreciate that, but there is a deadline associated with his introduction, and so we will work closely with him to try and bridge any um, local input that goes beyond his deadline, 
but I don't want to miss that bill introduction. He actually reported to us the second week of February. He really <coughs> needs, so we will do our best to conduct that in January. Great, so I think it's a, a great point for all of my colleagues here to understand the urgency of, of getting uh, this before our councils as well. Yeah, so, thank I, you. just to underscore a point, I think if there is any individual city that winds up opposing the legislation, the bill's dead. Because you're not going to get any one of our members, Levine or Senator McGuire, that's going to want to uh, author, author the legislation. So it is extremely important that we have our ducks in a row. I'll do what I can to help facilitate the process. We have the draft language based on what the motion is. I can kind of get that, but nothing will be introduced until we have complete sign off from in respecting the process that Diane's leading here. Yeah, and I, I really want to keep emphasizing that this is opening the gateway. I cannot come to your council and say you're going to get $2,475,000. So this this is, I, I really need your support that, that, and we can display the process and we can show the continuing involvement in the outreach that we plan, but, you know, this is a gateway bill, not uh, exactly what you're going to get. And, you know, I, I, I again want to turn back to San Rafael, who had these discussions with us a, a, a year and a half ago and, and has now recognized that, you know, we need to enter the, the stream of process here, uh, and that's what we can explain. And with your support, I think we can work through your councils on this. Uh, yes, Commissioner Hill. Uh, I, I'm uh, in support of this, Madam Chair. I just want to make sure it, that it's understood by Tam that the city of Larkspur, if we're being asked to provide a letter of support, we will remind uh, Tam that the uh, voters will expect that we display an understanding of how things can get better before we come back and ask for more resources. And I, I take the public speaker's comments very seriously in that regard. I don't think we've done a very good job at showing how we're actually making improving congestion with the uh, recent activity. So I think we really need to show that we have a, a better understanding of where the resources are going to be spent. And I think Central Marin and the congestion that we're experiencing tonight is a good illustration of what we're up against. It's not going to be easy to convince the public that uh, it's worth asking for more money if we can't show what we're going to do with it and make things better. Commissioner Frederick. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that we're clear that what we're discussing with the councils or, or what you're bringing to the council at this time is a discussion of the legislation for raising the cap, Correct. not necessarily anything to do with an expenditure plan Correct. at this time. Absolutely. <clears throat> and it is in the expenditure plan process that we will have the discussions of what the jurisdictions need and, and what's attainable. Correct. And, and, and we would need their, their support for the, and yes. sign off on the expenditure plan. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it just to uh, Commissioner Frederick's point, um, what I, I think that um, we also are doing is letting the councils know that within a few months, we're going to be inviting you to be very engaged with us and the community in developing the expenditure plan. So this actually gives us an opportunity to say, all we're here for this evening is to create the opportunity. And to Diane's point that if a community wants to know, well, what's in it for us, what we can say is we can't tell you what's in it for you, but we can tell you that if we don't have this opportunity, there's nothing in it for any of us. <laughs> uh, and I think that's as strong a message as how much you can expect to get um, uh, out of an, an expenditure plan that we'll all be developing. Please. Uh, you know, I think that as we're, we're, we're going to have a very strong process and, and we're going to continue to engage and in, in very closely engage each of the local jurisdictions. But I, I just want to mention this, this difficult dichotomy between, you know, congestion and, and getting here this evening and, you know, a, a look into the future. We're going to have to strike the right balance uh, in terms of what ends up going to the public. And we are, uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of time and a thought go into that, definitely, in the next year or so. Uh, 
May I add a quick clarification because you two have thought about this a lot. In terms of city support for it, it would it not be the case that those cities such as Fairfax and uh, San Rafael who are closest to the cap would be the most sensitive to bringing a measure forward or would there be another reason that other cities that aren't even close to the cap would have issues? Well, I, I actually think you're establishing a framework that's going to assure uh, those two jurisdictions in particular that there's going to be some room for you still to consider anything else you want to do in response to the mayor's comments back in October. So I, uh, I, I think we're opening up discussions um, in, in the most difficult part is going to be not being able to give, you know, absolute clear answers on what, what, what are we going to fund and how much you're going to raise it and, and, and what, do you, what, what, what is going to end up before the public. But, uh, yes, I, I think the 0.5% the, the max exemption for transportation without utilizing any existing space is, is going to resonate well in, in particular with those that are very near the cap. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Arnold, do you want yeah. to call the question? Just call the question, please. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. That motion carries. Thank you all. Thanks, guys.